The commissioned report from Miller and Chevalier was damning but conclusive. Malfeasance, unethical conduct, and utter disrespect for the tenants of the university. No surprise then that the Board of Trustees have referred A.J. Hogarth and Malik Hall to the governor for expulsion from the team. You're listening to Can't Read, Can't Write. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Can't Read, Can't Write, the podcast that proves Spartans can talk. I'm Mike Jones, joined as always by the guy who cannot be introduced, Kevin Grek, and the guy who never says no to a G&T, Alex Plum. Gentlemen, it's good to see you. It's good to be here. It's good to be together. It's very strange seeing you like this, one on each side. Oh. I would have thought you would have put yourself... And the, Squarely in the middle. Yeah, you yeah, truly are the, the Jeff Tubin of our podcast. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. It could only go one way, and here we are. No one's ever... Basically, no one has seen us. Correct. Definitely no one's seen us like this. Yes. And no one's and, been able to prove that we're the same person. Yeah. We're not the same person, because this is the first time seen together. Yeah, and it's so. always really charming, I find, when podcasts just talk about insidery stuff. Which like we're going to do a period for of time. For an hour today. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, here we are. Mm-hmm. 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 Great. Uh, we do want to say thank you, of course, for everyone and for listening, watching. You can uh, watch this on YouTube if you're so inclined. Uh, Greg has this fun thing happening. Uh, and uh, You should and, go check it out. Uh, and we could ask a small favor. Please share the pod with Spartans in your life. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Uh, and, of course, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to the show on YouTube at Spartans Pod. Greg. Yeah. Plum. Yeah. Plum, please share the structure of the show. Uh, oh, this podcast always leads behind the green wall. And when we go behind the green wall, we always let football lead. Unfortunately, today, we've only got beautiful things to talk about, about basketball, the sport that never, ever lets you down. Frankly, we should be leading with hockey. Uh, but alas, we'll talk about basketball. We'll talk about hockey. We'll talk about our own board of trustees because they're not fucking everything up. <laughs> We'll head off Grand River then. We've got news from around the Big Ten. Uh, interesting stuff. NCAA, boosters, investigations, pauses, Congress, big things. We'll preview the uh, game when we play Northwestern, and that'll be an exciting preview. Preview. Which Kevin yeah. always does a great job at. And extra it, prepared for today. It definitely Very doesn't say Purdue, Purdue on there. the outline. No, no. <laughs> Called an audible there. But we'll end with your Twitter questions, which is why we know you're listening. All right, uh, let's head behind the green wall. And of course, uh, we are, yeah, I think basketball, or football gave us happy birthday tweets and an announcement about Big Ten Media Days. So let's spend an hour on that. Uh, More important. Yes. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the Purdue game. And I think it's fair to say, uh, it's well, so it's a game that Michigan State lost uh, 74 to 80. Mm-hmm. Um how do you feel about that? Does that make you feel really good that you went on the road and you lost the number two, number three team in the country by six points? I mean, that that is probably what you should take away from this game, right? We covered. That's right. That's and I and I great don't, teams cover. Yeah, that's they right. don't. It, great teams win by but uh, lose but cover. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think if you're gonna is, lose, you gotta cover. Sure. Okay. There you are. I don't. I think we're moving the goalposts here. I. I. I <laughs> are we? Are we moving the goalposts? Yeah, well, it, is the whole team moving the goalposts? Yeah, AJ Hogarth certainly is. I, I guess my point is this: we, we, if we had been losing the entire game, if we were down twenty at multiple points throughout the game, and we came within six on the road, yeah, and they hadn't already, you know, pulled their starters or something, then maybe that's something to be proud of. This is a team, though, that has proved over the run of the season they can compete against the best programs in the country and beat them. We just choose not to. Well, that was what Malik Cole said. Oh, my God. Well, all right. Let's. So before we get this there, is like an Inception episode. We cover yeah. the end and then the end. No, no, no. Kind of going right out the back. back. That's that's the memento is not what I meant to say. You, Greg, that's you that's you laid the table here uh, kind of nicely because I so I. Um, Real much. Being in Michigan, uh, I've been on the road for a handful of days now. Yep. And, and I had this conversation with my father who's sitting just off screen right now. Hi, Dad. Cliff. Uh, but the. Uh, about what would make me angriest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because in there is a world in which 
a win would actually make you angriest. 100%. But there's the getting blown out to Purdue, and it's like, maybe then you say to yourself, this is the team I thought it was. It's just right. acceptance then at that point. In the in the bargaining, and, anger, so it's just acceptance. I'm not sure, does end. winning make you, would, would a win have, because this is a team that showed up in a way that they didn't the last two games, because yeah. they would have blown out Iowa and Ohio State and if Ohio they played State. like this. Correct. It's it's it is actually respectable to lose by six on yes. the road against a team like Purdue. Absolutely, wh- who has a big man who is the national player of the year last year and almost certainly will be again this year. Sure, um, like, and we don't have that spot, right? right. Like, so and you saw a team. Well, that I don't can know. Do- That's not true. We have a oh, a big that is plus sixteen in the in the box plus minus and Zach Eady. <laughs> was plus 16.2 in the box plus yeah. minus. Mm-hmm. So those are pretty comparable. So maybe we mm-hmm. do. Maybe we do. <laughs> so, all right. We're going to get to that in a second. But I do. I. We chatted after the game. We don't talk about anything. I, I was not calm after this game. Mm-hmm. I would say unwell. Ah, that's and, good. And also, if you want to talk about. He was it, wretching. Yeah, beginning at the end, <laughs> yeah. I was angry that Tom gave up at the end. You're saying he Juwan Howard in the last six seconds. Ten. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah, yeah they called off the dogs. They didn't do any yeah. game-extending yeah. hijinks. No, because, because like Malik Hall, it was, it was just good enough. Yeah. We came and we gave it the old college try, guys. Isn't that good enough? I mean, we can talk about Malik, uh, but... Let's dig into that because there's a couple things that are the disparity in this game, right? So I have one. Uh huh. Okay. Mr. Ajay Hogard. Oh, Lord. Mr. University Wiener himself. Not strong enough. Uh, my man, AJ Hogard, uh, on the day. Yeah. Two for 11 from twos. And, you know, long I guess. To you? Long, we're not there yet. That's the Tyson Walker. Uh, we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and only 50% from three, one for two. Um, but bro, basically didn't have it until the game was over. And <laughs> when your senior point guard yeah. goes yeah. on the road a- in a winnable game and goes two for 11 from the floor, yep. it is disqualifying. But let's... It- you can say that, but Tyson went five for fifteen. It's not like he had a a lot better day. That's true. But so then, so then, now put that experience or that statistic in the framework of an entire season, and I think you can forgive Tyson Walker for going five for fifteen in a game on the road against the number two program in the country. He has been trending down, but yes, well, fine. And and we have our own things with him, but but. This is consistent for AJ. Mm -hmm. Two for 11 performance from the field is what I've come to expect from him. 33% from the charity stripe is what I've come to expect from AJ (laughs) Hogarth. This is what his senior leadership offers us. He is the worst point guard in MSU history. Well, no, no, no. In the Tom Izzo era, no, no, you're, no. Pre- you're prepared to speak about point guards you yeah. weren't alive for. So. Honor, there could be child predators <laughs> who were point guards. Yeah, well, you could just go with uh, uncle murderers. Literally, we we don't have to make stuff up. Truly, for this. he's the worst. And Tum Tum there and just subscribe to the podcast. Thanks to you. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> just, just Welcome. Like Glad you're here. Like, Give up, us Tom? a cool question. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to say. I, I truly don't. Because I think at the end of the day, the statistics are one thing. Deplorable. But well, I, I stats are for losers. So. Fair enough. And we can't read them anyway. Um, but I think more to the point is his utter inability. And this is where I, I want to go to Malik, so, but I won't yet because I think we've got some more we're going to talk about. But this is where what's coming in the locker room, what's coming out of the locker room, what's being said to inspire and cajole and berate and hold the guys accountable to get them to perform at their best is not coming from A.J. Hogard, And how could it, when his performance is this lackluster, how would anyone respect a thing you'd have to say? Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's my, I mean, that's my thing with A.J. And I, you know, so in these statistics, we could talk all day. It's, he, he has to be as angry as, at himself. And why no one will name him, you know, I, I get why people don't use their names on Twitter because it's 
the humane thing not to do. Uh, but I've refused now, and people should just start calling it out because I mean, he should quit. The, the the stats though on and I'm I want to pull it up now though because uh, someone pulled this. Uh, I'm gonna look at the lineups. Twitter, because again, we'll remind everyone yes. and Tom Izzo that he promised to look at the stats per lineup this year. That was going to be but one of his. I believe he also said sort of his stretch goals for losers. Uh, <laughs> As he crumpled the paper up and threw it at Graham Couch's face. So uh, this made the rounds on Twitter. Uh, the uh, the box plus minus um, for a Hogard Walker Sissoko lineup yeah. versus a Hogard Walker Booker lineup. Now, 300 minutes played on the Sissoko lineup versus a mere 53 on the Booker lineup. Okay. But the plus minus for the Sissoko lineup is negative eight. The plus minus for the Booker lineup is positive 26. Yeah. At some point in time, there's enough of a difference right. that you can say plus minus is a flawed stat, but Correct. like truly shove it. Uh, other things, uh, obviously raw points, there's a differential because there's been more minutes by... It's uh, fair. But points per minute, 1.7 versus 2.3. Uh, the uh, At the rim field goal percentage is a whole 10% higher with Xavier Booker on the floor because he spaces the floor. And that's, oh God. And I also think, because oh. the ball doesn't just bounce off of his hands and dribble out of bounds. Effective field goal percentage. I'm sorry, three three point field goal percentage is uh, 16% higher. Effective field goal percentage is 9% higher. An effective field goal percentage percentile moves from the 37th percentile to the 98th percentile with Booker on the floor. So in this game, Xavier Booker plays 12 minutes, goes 3 for 6 from the floor, 2 for 5 from 3-point land, 3 for 3 from the charity stripe. Now, does he pick up a mere 2 rebounds in 12 minutes? And does he get owned a few times on defense? Fine. Sure. Sure. But the problem with this... But you know who else got owned? Every other center. Well, actually, they didn't score any points. I kind of think Coop held his own better than maybe anyone. Coop did play a good game. Uh, 16 minutes. Six points. uh, Yeah, six points, two for two from the floor, two for two from uh, the line, but five boards. But But his job is to sort of just anti-ED and check as much as you possibly can. Yeah. You were really upset in the we talk after the games and you were reminded. I I don't get close. um but uh you were really upset about Booker not playing down the stretch again and I I understand that mm-hmm. but at the same time I put this on AJ Hogard. Oh, 100%. Sure. The, I this is a little this sprinkling di- of Tyson Walker. This is different than the Ohio State game. Yeah. The Ohio State game I, was on Tom be, for Correct. not putting Booker in. Correct. This is a, uh, I, I think, more Booker, maybe not down the stretch, but just mm-hmm. generally speaking, more Booker would have been a net positive. Yeah. Uh, but we're getting some of it. I mean, I, I, to be fair, we doubled the minutes that M- Matty had, which is great. So the trend is in the right direction. Why it needed to happen at the f- end of February, it was, we'll never understand. I mean, it, I, think in, in, I think what's frustrating, in fairness is that clearly the player development narrative that Tom has written is accurate. Has, con- has deluded himself into believing. But, 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 self-evident. Booker, but Booker, we saw him earlier and we all LOL'd at the cries for him to play more. Right, sure. Because he wasn't ready. Yeah. But now we're all watching the same game right. where he clearly is making a difference. Yeah. And, and if you, you... I just don't know how you go against the National Player of the Year with a total void for scoring at that position right. when he is so good. Like, let's give credit where credit's due. Zach Eady is an exceptional basketball player. Yeah. So to claim that anyone's, unless you brought Xavier Tillman back, like, are you going to stop him? No. So you need to get production out you of him. You have to score. You have to score. The 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 diagram, the shooting diagram for AJ Hogard is it's enough to make you apoplectic. It is inconceivable how anyone could be as consistently inconsistent at key areas on the court. How when confronted with anything really in the two point range, really within I don't know. If he jumps other than a layup, it's a terrible decision. It is only zero percent chance of likelihood. 
how do you keep doing? Has anyone ever confronted him with facts or figures? Does he know what these diagrams are? Analytics are for losers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's look at one. You brought this up earlier. MSU was nine for 32 on mid range twos uh -huh. and to nine for 21 on three point attempts. Yeah. Did you know? That's not good. There's an interesting thing about basketball. Yeah. Three point attempts are worth 50% more points. <laughs> than long twos. Than long so twos if you are. take a uh, yes, step back, yeah. and yet we insisted on shooting 10 more, more of them of and shooting significantly worse. Yeah. We, we've been long overdue. Yeah. I think last year we talked more about the long twos than we've talked about them this year. Well, we were better at them last year. But we are so overdue for having a conversation about the long twos. They so, are and, killing us. And I think, listeners, the there's, you know, there is a, a world you can go to that is is analytics are for losers. Mm -hmm. Like you know, Nate Oates has perfected this down at Alabama. I think that's right. You uh, you either shoot next to the rim, yeah. like we're talking dunks or like layups, yep. or you're shooting from three point land. There's also if you're a, uh, an accessory to murder, a mm -hmm. hundred percent mm -hmm. chance, hundred percent chance of playing. Yeah, so. that's right. Those are Good. the two major analytics. I wish Chris Beard was also a fan of this. So we <laughs> really triple down on it. But the so the important thing here is that there, when we talk about effective field goal percentage, that is an averaging out that happens about the value of a shot. Mm -hmm. So a three point shot inherently has more value, even though it's a lower percentage shot, because you make up those points. You make up the difference. Um, so it's like a full beer inherently has more value than an empty beer. Yeah. Better. So the Bear me as well, please, sir. Uh, it, so the the challenge is that when we're not, when AJ Hogard is not, they're they're right up top there. You're so oh, tall. Nice. Are you I so see, tall? You can't see them. them. The back, I can't see them. Anyway, uh, that so a, a long two, a jump shot two, is a as as a percentage is as as challenging in some ways as a three point Correct. shot. You're because we're talking about a foot of a difference, but has lower return on investment in the, in the sense of points. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Cliff Jones, everyone. Cliff Jones. Thank you. Off camera. <laughs> anyway. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. It's. Poor Michael. It is it's worth talking about. Movies. No, no, it, it's, it's, we've talked about it last year and it's worth revisiting when you see the volume numbers right. about that. You know, some of the complaints about Tom Izzo's assistant coaches. Who? Which is also to say, if you're complaining about Tom Izzo's assistant coaches, in fairness, you're complaining about Tom Izzo. Correct, 100%. So, John Beeline, at one point in time, who's a mastermind mm -hmm. of offensive coaching, mm -hmm. was forced to hire a new staff. Yeah. Because he, well, no, he didn't. He was well. He had to after he took them all out into the wood chipper. <laughs> you, this is this is the thing that Tom refuses to do. And so this is where I want to go. And I know you're focused on actual things, but it, there is a there's an ultimate. I think the ultimate issue for me, at least, with Tom Izzo is the gay brown. The what wasn't it Who? gay brown? Yeah, yeah, yes. that, that's the gay that. brown uh, <laughs> experience in the tunnel that he was caught. No, you know, gay, walking with gay brown. Getting in his ass, and it was on ESPN. Aaron Henry, I think, also. Oh, was it? Oh, there, oh. Was, there was a game, in, the game into, the into the tunnel, but the Aaron tunnel. Henry in the tournament against the, LSU, I think. Yeah. And uh, from, to, to my mind, that's the inflection moment where someone got to him and was like, You can't do that anymore. You can't do it anymore. And Tom truly does not know any longer how to coach the program because. These guys are playing in a way that would make you think that Tom just sits there and just goes red in the face and it just like is destroying his arteries, but he refuses because he's lost the ability. He does he he doesn't know how to act with authentic rage any longer. And everyone who's come before for decades has said, We know that Tom talks to us that way because he loves us, because he wants the best for us, because he's calling us out on our bullshit. So that those of us who want to get to the league one day will get to the league. Those of us who simply want to be developed humans who understand what accountability looks like, we'll, we'll have that opportunity mm -hmm. for ourselves. And I think ultimately, if Tom can't figure out how to either say, fuck the media and I'm going to just be an asshole until I get fired, or he needs to resign because this, this is not 
it's been and this coach. has been years of him doing it. And in fairness, it, like because he's set, he's kind of been ramping up to the yeah. the refrain that we're getting yes. now from yeah. him of yeah. right. it's always the coach's fault. So, can't can't blame the players. Can't blame the players. players. But yeah. but it wasn't. It, it was the uh, COVID year, the the fanless year. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it was maybe it was actually maybe it was the Cassius COVID year that uh, Rocket Watts. There there was a story that came out about Rocket Watts where Tom like laid into him mm-hmm. and Rocket got all sullen and pissy mm-hmm. yeah. and and Tom's like, "Are you pissed at me?" Yeah, and Rocks him. He's like, no, "Are you pissed at me?" Like, feel something, and, and he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Well, then say that." Yeah, like because it, it the thing that's missed in 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 these these moments that ca- are captured, and you see this with the development of players over the time, the the because you can see freshmen will do the the arm around Tom, and then he's like, "No, you haven't yes, earned that. You haven't earned that yet." But but there is still the consistency of if you think I'm wrong, yes, then say challenge, I'm wrong, then challenge me. But like, and we can have a disagreement, yeah. But we're gonna talk through. But you're it. gonna come correct and actually be able to to defend your position. Right. This just sullenness, this moroseness that's putting the head down they're just not fucking trying and that for me is what kills me because that's aj hogard 100 percent all over his face just doesn't get won't be pushed but in this game i think what was more frustrating and we can now talk about malik hall is that they they did play well they they hustled mm. this was a good team effort yep. maybe a poor shooting effort yep. but they they play connected they pushed the ball they 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 hustled. It, it came down to they didn't shoot well, and Purdue got one second, please. Their white boys hit all their threes. All their well, threes. It, there's that, and then yeah, so the white boy three, and then the Purdue getting twice as many free throw attempts yeah. as Michigan State. And, and well, that's Zach Eady drawing sixteen fouls. And I gotta game. say, you know, this is where not an exaggeration, by the way. Zach, sixteen fouls. Zach Eady does not need the guy just. Physically, structurally, esoterically, does not need the officials' support. He does not need the officials' support. Anyone who's refereed at a high level knows there are key players whom you have to protect. Okay? In a soccer game, at least, you're refereeing a game, you know who the all star is center forward, center mid, whoever the distributor is, or whoever is the, the big you know, shot taker. He's the guy you just have to watch out for. It doesn't get any special permission. You're not calling. You're not not calling fouls against him if he commits fouls, but you are watching guys to take advantage of him. Late tackles, things like that. So one can... Why does Tyson not get that treatment, by the way? Well, yeah. because he gets, he gets the reverse treatment. And and so so one could think like, okay, the referees are going to be making sure that people aren't ganging up on Zach Eady. But the size differential alone would require... Even the most biased referee, I think, would struggle to, like, objectively call the sheer number of fouls that get called. It is, I mean, some of those, it's physically impossible for him to draw that much contact. And not, and not at least minimum, give it back. And more to, and and that's the point. For you to have to give a preferential advantage to a player that you're watching to protect, there has to be some deficit or some weakness that you're trying to code for. Zaggy doesn't have that. He is physically imposing. He can move players around at will if he Did you see the did you see the uh the clip of him and Malik? No. Because they reviewed this for a hook and hold. Oh, uh so it, you're talking about that we can actually yeah. demonstrate this oh, for a camera. So Malik is up and then Zach Eady comes around like, the head. <laughs> Truly, and, and Malik gets, gets called, called for the, the elbow in the face. Yes. And but Zach Eady's the one who's like in his chin. Yes. It, it was yes. more. It was more like one of the. Yeah, I've been there, I've been and that's there. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Like, you I, like it? I don't know. It's it doesn't. It, that's what I'm just saying. It's inconceivable. There, there is one understands a certain penchant for protecting a key player. There is a completely other side of the coin, though, which is he hasn't merited any of this. The kid scores so much. He. It, it it it's just not intuitive, and the Big Ten officials this season have been uniquely bad, uniquely inconsistent, and uniquely bad. But they have been consistent on the season at being the sixth guy on the court for Purdue, and that is a, a we saw Chris Collins get ejected for for, for calling like, it out, and he was right too. He should have called it out much earlier in the game. 
Uh, one final thing. Uh, I'm kind of taking the temperature of the room. Might be moving on. Yep. Last thing that bothered me about this game. I want Brain Smith on my team. Yeah. I don't like it that he's on other teams. Yeah, I want him on my team. He seems like a perfect Tom Izzo point guard playing at Purdue right now. It was another upsetting development well, of this game. It'll be a real shine though when they lose out in the first weekend. <laughs> I mean, we have that. We'll hate that for Matt Painter and the team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but it, it is senior night's coming. Oh. <laughs> and it's going to be a different kind of cheering on senior night. What's, but what's what's tough about it is that you know Jeremy Fears isn't playing right now, mm. and I think everyone's Why? because he was shot. Uh, uh, okay, but th- there's the. Has that been reported? Yeah, I don't think so. Anywhere. Some some companies don't like to mention it. Yeah. Uh, but the the I, I think at this point in time we would have seen Jeremy Fears start multiple games. I, that's fair. And it, what's going to be weird about Senior Night? Yeah, is that if this season had progressed ordinarily, yeah, we would have been. I, I'll speak for me. Yeah, I'd be a little bit more at ease about that transition. Mm-hmm. What is concerning is that I don't know, and none of us do, how Jeremy Fierce is going to come back. Sure. And and you hope that he's the player that we saw. Yep. But again, he was shot. Shot in the leg. Which I've heard a leg is important for playing basketball. Yeah, you got to run. Yeah. <laughs> and, and jump, jump. from time to time. Yeah. Is there a shot, particularly from the two-point range that we enjoy doing, with well, the jump involved? Well, frankly, for him, then it won't matter because we don't need to make those ones. Yeah. <laughs> we those don't, baskets aren't we're priming the fan base that. for missing all those shots, yeah. so that's good. Yeah, be good for you, Jeremy. You just come in and pay all that Whatever off. Whatever the fuck you want to do. So, I don't know. I, 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 we've seen from AJ Hogard, though, that at some point in time, this can turn on, and maybe when the lights are bright, like, that's what happens. Uh, did he... What, how are his assist stats? It doesn't matter. It does matter. Four, I think, on the game. But Jesus. Yeah, it's not good. But I got something I really need to complain about. Gene, I don't think I've complained Gene about it. Let's go. Let it rip. Wisconsin <laughs> was the superior hockey team on one of those two games, and our hockey team should be ashamed of itself. Uh, <laughs> yes, let's neg them in. For having dropped that second a- game. Any games. Why? Unacceptable. Why? You won the first you one. You win the first yeah. one and you lose the second one? You win the first one and clinch the, the Big Ten Championship, which we're all very excited sure. about. Sure, yeah, but let's oh. focus on the second yeah, game. I'm excited about yeah. it because if you can't win the second game, you might as well have lost the first game, yeah. which means you didn't clinch it, which means we haven't earned this. Right. 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 You clearly phoned it phoned in. in. You thought, I'm going to rest on my lack. laurels. Uh, uh, what, what laurels? It shows a lack of toughness. It's the what, coming of a pro. Let me tell you this. If yeah. there's someone who should be fired into the sun, it's it's nice. Adam Nightingale. Yeah. Get his ass <laughs> out of the program. What has he done? If you can't win against me, I, I was got I you know I, I don't know. a top ten yeah. top ten hockey know. team. I don't know. What I you're know. Doing. Shameful, no. frankly. I wish AJ Hogard played hockey so that we would have, have we would have a more a have more, more appropriate yeah. hockey team. Yeah, you know? yeah. If AJ Hogard was on the hockey team, we'd have lost both those games. Proudly, proudly. And then Malik Hall would have come in the next day and been like, said, "You guys, eh, well, we give it a shot. Give it a try. We didn't there actually end up talking about Malik and his quote, but that's fine. We uh, kind of we'll run we'll back to it. I'm sure there's going to be a Twitter question. We about can bring it up. Ask nine things people say. Quotes when we get into the board trustee stuff, and we can just slip it in there somehow. So, uh, it, but in in sincerity, uh, MSU hockey. It, as much as you can raise up from the grave, oh has God. done so. Yeah, winning right. a Big Ten championship in Adam Nightingale's second year. No, unbelievable. Uh, and it looks to be, knock on wood, looks to be a uh, a one seed in the NCAA tournament. Potentially. Potentially. Poten- potentially. Like, yeah. you'd like to see a quality performance mm. in the Big Ten tournament, which we will be hosting. We'll see all the games yeah, for that. Hurt. Yep. That can't hurt over at my nice arena. And that, they that, include, if the seeding holds, mm-hmm. the higher seeds win, another game against U of M at Mun in the uh-huh. Big Ten tournament. That would be a real shame to... Because, guess what, folks? We've got some things to say about U of M's program off Grand River. Uh, but it'd be great. It'd be great. Uh, so, congratulations. And, and I guess it's maybe worth revisiting. 
this now makes multiple non-revenue Big Ten championships that have been accumulated in the last few years. Not all of them, as much as we've been praiseworthy of of Allen Howard, not all of those folks have been Allen Howard hires. Mike Rowe is not. Give Beekman the credit he deserves. Beekman hired uh, uh, Mike Rowe. uh, Rowe. Jeff Hassler, the soccer program. Something tells me Howard was probably pretty involved in those hires. If we can say... (laughs) Listen, we, we can be really creative with who made what hire, but let's the be narrative real, can change. It's let's Bill be real. Beekman in those all ill-fitting pants. That's Bill Beekman's hire. Robin Freilich, just to get back to this, mm-hmm. uh, secures yeah. double buy in the women's tournament yeah. in just her first year. Well, yeah. I don't know what that is because, uh, I, to my knowledge, double buys aren't happening. There was a double buy on the table uh-huh. for Michigan State men's basketball, <sighs> and then they um, they. they Basketball they beside their they... pants. Oh, that's what it was. Instead of kissing the Spartan logo this year, they're going to shit on it. Yeah, a real they should. Cleveland steamer situation. But AJ's still going to kiss that pile of shit at the end for whatever reason. <laughs> He's been setting this. Up. He really He's has got... been. What's the yeah. What's the philia when you're scatophilia? Sca- or yeah. isn't it? He's been setting this whole yeah. season up for this yeah. moment. Now it pays yeah. off on him. Wiley, son of a gun. He was playing us the whole time. I like I how am. primed you were on scatophilia, both of you. <sighs> Next up, uh, we've got Speaking some- of scatophilia, <laughs> the board of directors. Trustees, as it oh, were. Oh, board of trustees, as it were. That's a, you're going a little too close to yeah, home on that uh, one. No, I, lo- I love my board. Love my board if you're listening. Love my board. Uh, so, who, who wants to recap this? Here? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, me. I should do the law-related thing from the law firm. Oh, right? what? Miller and Chevalier? Chevalier? Cheval- Chevalier. So, uh, devotees of the pod will recall that one Brianna Scott levied some accusations against a, a couple members of the board of trustees. Mm-hmm. Then, and it is then, Chair Rima Vassar and Dennis Denham. Yes. So, the university, to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars, greater than half a million, uh, went ahead and brought in a third-party counsel to to investigate these a findings. A firm I've never heard of. Yeah, it's strange that this is the time that they go to do that. There were some... Probably because the first nine firms were like, duh, no, <laughs> no like, thanks. But we have the punch card. <laughs> we, remember, we've come <laughs> you to... You have to say so yes. So many investigations. You have to say yes to this. Uh, <laughs> some of these findings were found to be false. Um, Basically, Rima Vassar can be made a pawn in a advertisement for Brian Masalam, and that's fine. Yeah. Because, and they should have just put this in the report. I, I encourage you to go read the report, but they did a lot of like hand wringing over this. But the truth is, it just doesn't matter, and right. that's why. Yeah. Like you have to be so up your ass to think this one page, you know, uh, Glossy, advertisement yeah, and grains Detroit business slash the LSJ is going to affect anyone. anyone. Yeah. But it is stupid for her to be in it. Mm-hmm. It's um, debasing. But it I think be. some of the more interesting things in the report is that it was found yeah. that both Dennis Deno and Brima Vassar participated in um, bullying and yeah. uh, conduct unbecoming of being trustees sure. we know this because meeting with student groups yep. they were recorded duh coaching student groups duh. with how to complain publicly about the administration and encouraging them to uh who was his name the uh the chair of the, jack of the faculty jack lipton thank Simpton. you faculty Simpton. Uh, you know, to go to the press about how he is actively racist. Because Can I say this? A- if you're going to coach students, this is for anyone at home. Yep. If you're going to coach students on how to uh, undermine the people you hire to do the job, at least give them factual information. This was the real humdinger for me. Uh, Rima Vassar actually giving false, inaccurate information to the students. We talked about- it, it is as if you were setting them up for failure. So... Make the students fail at the work you've set them up to do to undermine the people that you hired to do the job that you're accountable for seeing gets done? Yeah, she told them that the administration had lost MSU its accreditation, which was untrue. Not true. Uh, She also put someone up at Wayne State for sending uh, uh, Trustee Scott a letter with featuring a racial slur and some other you know, mm-hmm. pejorative terms, mm-hmm. uh, delivered from a Wayne State yeah, that's not pump, yeah, envelope. Yep. So ridiculous throughout. 
Um, and then there was this, you know, so, so basically these two are the worst. Um, and there is a particularly good quote in here that yeah. I, I, I'd like to, to read um, about the two and about their conduct. Interviewees noted that, quote, concerns around the fear of retaliation are mainly from Vassar. No one wants to be subject to Deno, Dennis Dano's wrath, but no one thinks it's a career ender. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> which is indicting one of yeah. the greatest. The idea that a law firm <laughs> saw fit to put that quote on page five in right up front in the in the executive summary, yeah, just to personally and yep. professionally humiliate yes. you yes. of. People think that you're a petulant child, yes. but you don't have the juice to actually really affect anyone. Yeah, you're just a loud schlub. Is such a humiliation that, like, the idea that you do this for free, yeah, it's really, just it's real indictment. It's wild. It feels like people would be rather con- would rather be confronted by the Wells Har- Hall preacher, or would rather right. not be confronted by the Correct. Wells Hall than Dennis Dano. Correct. Like, yes. Yes, that guy has more real... You can really ruin your day in a way yeah. that Dennis yeah. Denno is Dennis not Dennis capable just with of. with his oversized tennis shoes. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. So in, in fairness to student groups, a few of them were interviewed in this. They indicated, you know, after being coached, that actually they realized maybe they were being They'd taken advantage of up. Yep. by these two. Yep. Um, there were, since then, certain student groups have noted they didn't participate in this and yep. maybe their point of view was not uh was not included in the report yeah. but um overall just a, another good old-fashioned humiliation for the msu board of trustees well I, 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 in fairness I, 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 I don't know that this was a, a humiliation in the sense that uh it was a recapitulation of a prior humiliation yeah, right. and that hopefully is leading to progressing past some humiliation. Yes. So last night, uh, the board met. Yeah. There were three or four items on the agenda. Censures for Rima Scott and Dennis Deno. Rima Vassar. Rima Vassar, Dennis Deno. And also one for Brianna Scott. Yep. Brianna Scott's censure has n- effectively no teeth. No teeth. But the Rima Vassar and the Dennis Deno censures carry with them losing their board positions, their committee assignments. In the board positions, to be clear, isn't being on the board because they're elected officials. Correct. But it's any any powers that they have on the board. board. Correct. And that included Rima Vassar being board chair. Yep. Which she already resigned because she thought that was going to happen. Because you knew that was going to happen. Yep. So at least she does know how to be on a board a little bit. Well... Well, but um, I think she thought that was going to get her away from being referred to the governor, which was another part of what yeah, happened. But that was going to happen. Well, but okay. that's the point. And I think another good example, Dennis Denno, you dumb idiot. You oh. lackey. Yeah. Uh, you absolute stoneless maroon, totally stoneless <laughs> following <laughs> in the footsteps of a real imbecile. And, and here, what do you have to show for it? She tried to get her own way out, per usual. Yeah. And was just going to let you, with your dumb face, go right in front of the governor. Now, I do want to say this, because I checked up, I read the law on this. The governor's power to remove these individuals after review. You are the only one reporting this, by the way. I am the only one reporting this. I may be the only person that that actually read the the law. (laughs) The governor's authority. So you're hearing it here first. The governor's authority to remove them only takes effect in the event that the legislature is not in session. If the legislature is in session... The House of Representatives actually have to have a, uh, they have to develop articles of impeachment and the trial would have to happen in the Senate. But the good news is they go out. That's a session. wild difference. Can we take a second? That's a yes. wild differential. Wild right? differential. Well, no. So, and so that, that it spells out the policy. If they're not in session, the governor does have to hold a public hearing where she has to be able to receive uh, public, public feedback, public feedback, and she has to be the person presiding over the session. And after that, she makes her decision, and she just has to give a report to the legislature. That's it. It is wild. That is the that is big time hashtag worth it. Yes, like, <laughs> it's so, almost as if the writers in the seventies, right, oh, we're like it was the state yep. we're like this will never happen. Yeah, it barely matters. Yeah, we'll just make a. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. this is a necessary thing? The governor's never going to want to hold a public if forum. Was, she has to share herself. If there was ever a problem, they would just resign. Mm-hmm. It's the right. That's how boards work. But they work. would have. It's a real Leslie Nope situation. Oh, it feels totally. very. She's going to have to sit there and. But yep. that is the right answer. Yep. Um, 
All right, let's move on. Uh, I don't know what to say beyond this other than the board is embarrassing and uh, uh, I'm thankful for these changes that are coming. Uh, but we should shout out some things before we move on. We, we lost. We did. Tonight. We did. We did. We did indeed have dinner and I think maybe there's a knock on the door from the purveyor of 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 said place of said dinner uh but we we dined at mama's murk and tile and eatery this evening and it was wow. fantastic irony beverages are on the menu literally folks the knock on the door as we moved literally. into this was from the owner herself mama uh, herself and uh and it was fantastic uh cannot recommend the signature cocktail menu menu enough quite good we'll be tweeting it out um but it was really truly fantastic for the evening uh and cannot recommend listen it. they've got the land they got a lansing favorite they have an olive burger on the menu yep. all right so if you peanut barrel is not your style what's the one you took me to dagwoods dagwoods if the dagwoods which Dagwoods is the kind of like yeah. maybe, maybe if you've had too many dagwoods and you want to yeah. just you, you just want to mix it up a little bit. You want to go down on 127 and then yeah. over on 94. Yeah, if you're in the Grass Lake area, yeah. Yeah. you know, get your olive burger from you know, the Mama's greater Mark. Ann Arbor area. I'm not aware of an olive burger. Well, That's how fair. could they? Yeah. No, this is a special treat. This is a this is a slice of East Lansing in Washtenaw County. You owe it to yourself and your family. Progeny. Mm-hmm. Even. Mm-hmm. Your progeny. Together. You owe it to your God. Yeah. <laughs> Get your ass to mamas. Uh, but it, it, yeah, in sincerity, great food, great food, uh, lovely vibe, and the drinks were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we would normally shout out listener Mike Jones, uh, but I think tonight we're just shouting out Miller Lite and to the Miller and Lite. Cliff's Gin and Tonic and Cliff's Jeeves and Tees. Jeeves and Tees. We'll come back next week with some listener Mike Jones liquor. Uh, it's always fantastic. Uh, but listener Mike Jones did say he's going to stop by Mama's Merc. So I, next time he's in Grass Lake. Uh, all right, gentlemen, let's talk off Grand River. And I'm going to step away as you all talk about John Sanderson. So John Sanderson, for folks who don't know, is the, what well, was, let's use the past tense here, was the strength and conditioning coach at the University of Michigan for the men's basketball program. In addition to the men's basketball program, though, he also coached uh, or conditioned rather athletes for several Olympian programs. I didn't realize this. Michigan has an Olympian. Yeah, it's annoying. It comes up every four years, and they're like, "Oh, we have Olympian. more, we have more uh, uh, medalists than uh, Belize." Well, it's like great. Congrats. Yeah, next. We're so proud of you. No one's proud of them. I, I'm, I'm struck by this. So he has resigned from the university. Uh, yeah, theoretically his choice. He signed. Uh, a, no, he says specifically in well, his statements. Yeah. This was not my, not my choice. choice. Yeah. <laughs> he did sign a non-disclosure, so he's apparently able to at least disclose that much. Well, the the email got foiled. So, oh, is that what yeah. it was? Well, let's let's hope that he has made just an absolute fuck ton of money because he deserves every penny. And I know nothing about this man. I don't really care to. Um, but what uh, is alleged to have happened mm-hmm. uh, in the course of this investigation on the documents that were foiled and everything else? Sanderson, the strength and conditioning coach, oversaw Jace Howard, the son of. Michigan coach, uh, Juwan Howard, if we can call him a coach, yep. um, uh, berating one of the other trainers. Jace has been out this season or for some time anyway with a stress fracture. Right. And uh, berating the training staff, I should be in now. Why aren't you clearing me? And then raising his voice, getting very agitated. John Sanderson, you know, interjected himself and said, you know, young man, calm down. You are a student athlete. He is a professional. This is not how student athletes speak to professionals. Right. Uh, that response was enough to set Juwan Howard into one of his into a rage, full unhinged moments. In fairness to Juwan Howard, yes, I think what happened there mm-hmm. is he had a flashback, mm-hmm. and he said, mm-hmm. "Is that Sanderson? Yep, or is that the Mark Judge? Oh, the Mark Judge! Oh, I can see if I can so mad the Mark Judge! Oh, the Mark Judge!" Oh, I see the Mark Judge. What I want folks who are watching to know is that we haven't been able to see <laughs> the alter ego that Kevin Gregg adopts when becoming when I see Mark Turgeon. When becoming Mark Turgeon. And when, when, I see, when I become Joan Howard, seeing Mark Turgeon. Oh, the Mark Turgeon. Well, it's really upsetting. And uh, boy, God, he gets upset. Mark Turgeon, Greg Gard, really anyone that he can slap or throw a fist at, mm-hmm. he will. Well, as, as he did, he pursued 
uh, John Sanderson across the room. Uh, they had to be separated. Had to be physically. separated, uh, restrained. Of course, John Sanderson, like I was going to hold my own, so that was his own. He is a big dude. Well, he played, he's a big guy. He played basketball. Played, played something. Something at Ohio State. And um, and there were yeah. some there were some emails that went back and forth. Uh, Ward Manuel here um, was able to. Uh, he was like, "Well, let's enforce Jawan's let's enforce his zero, zero tolerance, tolerance policy." policy. We're good at that here. He was able to do that by signing a NDA with John Sanderson yeah. and releasing him with, I hope, millions of dollars. I bet not millions of dollars. No. But Let's sure. say hundreds. Coaches of... make a lot. It is wild that this is the product. Of, this is what happens with a University of Michigan zero tolerance policy. But not only that, you have a you have a coach who has struck multiple people. Yeah. Who is fucking deranged. Yes. Who cannot coach? Whose only success has been on the largesse of John Beeline's success, of success, his ability to recruit and develop talent, and 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 coaching one of the worst programs in this in Michigan's history. Yes, I love the largesse. What? The largesse. I am. Oh, thank you. I am unable to say anything really for Ward Manual other than. Cuck. <laughs> <laughs> is there another word? Is there another word for more manual? What's worse is that he's been he's he's a cuck to multiple men. Oh he's my god! To, he's a cuck to Sam yes. Ono. Yes. Juan. To Juan. He's, he's a cuck to Jim Harbaugh. Who's left? But he's still cucking him. <laughs> it, I I Ward <laughs> Manuel has no sense of integrity. He is a person bereft of really any sense of self worth. Could you imagine going through life being Ward Manual can we, right wait, now? Can we can we take a pause because I think it's easy to take a dump on Michigan and and sure it's it's, it's fun, well earned and fun. But could you imagine if this conduct mm -hmm. happened from an AD at Michigan State or any other university? No, no, no but no, ours truly, in particular. Truly, truly, can you imagine what yes. would be written about in yes. the free press if yes. it, if Tom Izzo needed to be restrained mm -hmm. from his strength and conditioning coach, yeah. or My another coach in the Big Ten? God, or, it, you know, many of these things. Because on camera at a game, he struck a man in the face. Yeah, and <laughs> and yeah, because because Tom gets it for going after a player with uh -huh. intensity. Yeah, which by the by, there are zero reports of. Or any indications of Tom Izzo striking a player. Ever. Did, I'm Ever. sure he says some unkindly things to them. No, I, I, bet, I bet it's all very, it's all very delicate. Mm -hmm. What's wild is I don't just know that I've ever seen him go after AJ in that way and people who need it. But right. that's not but the... That's not, this isn't the point. But it, I, it truly, for Ward to keep his job and, and it like... It feels in line with what we've seen in politics. Yeah. Of the, if I just don't say anything, yeah. mm -hmm, nothing's going to happen. Yes. And he's living that life. Yeah. Because it, he, he got bent over by Harbaugh three years in a row. Correct. And then uh, there's the, uh, well, he took the shame. Yep. Just ate the shame for what happened with Mel Pearson. Yep. Yeah. Whole hockey. Uh, the, uh, Juwan Howard, we've moved to it. Well, first there was Xavier Simpson, Jeff Jackson, whatever his yep. name is, with his car. Yep. His wife's car. Oh, his, speaking of truly, truly. Truly. <laughs> truly. But, but then there's oh. the zero tolerance policy with, with, with Juwan. Like, uh, this is, and then Santa Ono regularly debasing yes, him in public. Undermining him and, at every step of the way. Yep. I just. Stealing the thunder. Yeah, and and it feels at some point in time. It w actually, frankly, the Santa Ono stuff makes it seem validated, mm -hmm. and I just, it, which means that Ward doesn't actually deserve the blame here. Mm. It's not Ward. Yep. It's the trustees. It's the alumni. Yep. It's your students. It's your, it's your fan base. Yep. It's your president. It's everybody who has so it's, enabled it, this idiot. So you have M fans, if you're listening, yeah. I actually blame all of you because you are actually the pieces of shit. You're a rotten institution to the core because you tolerate this because it, you, all you say leaders in the best is we just want a natty. So who cares? Yeah. That's right. No standards. 
Speaking of which, should we talk about Josh Gaddis for just a hot second? Oh, uh, yeah, why not? This is one rumor that Could we heard. never trafficked in. No, 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 no. So the rumor was yes. there was a well-populated rumor. This was almost like, it, it, what, do we, what do you want to call it? This was like just accepted fact. Mm-hmm. This was this was Chris <clears throat> Allen, Darrell Summers' girlfriend type. Mm-hmm. Terrible and, boy. And, and, it, and it seemed like it, but it became accepted fact because it-, it Folk it, truth. It, or something it, like folk folk Michigan folk fans folk needed truth. to- <laughs> rationalize losing out on a recruit. Right. Despite the fact that the recruiting is taken a nosedive despite sure. all of their success. Sure. But Can't imagine th- mine. there's a, uh, a, a recruit, now player, Xavier Worthy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, now in the NFL Combine. Yeah. Now in the NFL Combine. Uh, who Michigan did not land. Mm-hmm. And the rumor was that, again, well-trafficked well to trafficked. the extent that it became uh, apocryphal. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll find this word eventually. Yeah, th- that is. Th- I believe that's the appropriate use. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is your whole job. I, uh, I think it's the polite version of wives' tale, right? Oh. Like uh, apocryphal is that we're not going to gender this nonsense. Mm-hmm. It's just it's uh, sort of lore that. That's becomes, why I don't know. It. That's why you don't know it. Yeah, misogyny <laughs> only, everyone. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but so, um, it, yeah. So that that Josh Gaddis slept with yeah. Xavier Worthy's mother. Just got. And that's why Xavier Worthy didn't come yeah. to Michigan, which yeah. looking back on it now, I think we can all agree feels precisely like the thing they would say to justify not landing a recruit. It's also something that we've talked about before. It's like, this is what these types of rumors always are. Yeah. Like, oh. Always sleeping with the recruit. Oh, yeah. Mother. Something, oh, something. And we're not going to dissect the racial component of this either for mm-hmm. a moment. But uh, the... So Josh Gaddis finally chimes in, yeah, and says, "A, no, yeah, B, I have some stories to share about yeah. the way recruiting down went down at Michigan, which seemed to be the implication was are in keeping with yeah. some of the violations that they're that the actually- NCAA is actively investigating them for." And he didn't say seems to be violations. He yeah. said. Do y'all want me to talk about the violations? Yes. As I in, have receipts. There are violations. Mm-hmm. He even said that the rivals guys know what all of the violations are. So, uh, which is fun because the Michigan rivals guys are real annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just carrying that water for the institution all over the place. Because, and it's worth that. remembering because it, uh, I know we've at times used things from, and it's not to say that there's an apples to apples, mm-hmm. but We've at times used things from, say, uh, Justin Thind or... Who was uh, interviewed in the uh, Miller... Uh, Miller de Chevalier. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, or Corey Robinson, uh, Stephen Brooks. We've talked about his tweets at times. It, but it is worth remembering yeah. that many of those people who were paid by those publications are not yeah. journalists. Sure. I, I, you know, I think Stephen does a really great job of trying to be, you know, a journalist who covers MSU. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I think maybe it's a bit worse over on the U of M side yeah. than what we've got over here. But it is worth remembering that when you read things from folks who are from Rivals or 24-7 or uh, on three, that like, because let's not pretend that Jim Camperoni is as insightful as he can be at times. Yeah. Isn't a jabroni just like the three of us? Yep. And so he may know a bit more about X's and O's, but like, uh, so the idea that rivals would be sitting on information is not altogether alarming. Yeah. 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 They're anyway, not journalists. Anyway. All right. Anyway, Josh so Gattis. Uh, Josh Gaddis throwing receipts around and also Ward Manual. Wouldn't you believe it? Talking about throwing things around, let's talk about Caitlin Clark throwing her own body around. Well, we're going to celebrate her first. All right, here, let's do this quickly, because we, this is... Yeah, all right, So fine. let's find some time back during the Caitlin Clark segment. Yeah, no, no it's, it, it's needless to say, uh, Caitlin Clark uh, passed Pete Maravich, and that's a massive accomplishment. Well, uh, To a new scoring leader in college basketball. And I believe uh, she found out someone called her Ponytail Pete. The, uh, <laughs> the, the image is... 
hmm. shockingly mirrored. Mm, <laughs> and she upsetting. she liked the comparison. Oh, good. So, uh, she was a, a confident, fan. handsome woman. That's yeah. very good. Uh, and uh, did you see the technical that was she... for punching? Yes. She well, who amongst us hasn't celebrated a Draymond from time to time? <laughs> so. I, I I don't think we're prepared to cast stones. It, it was here. a good tweet. I don't know who came up with it. I should be able to cite it. But is Caitlin Clark the most likable, unlikable player in college basketball? It was good. It was, it was like, you. You got it. You kind of like they you, named it. Mm, yeah, finger, finger on the pulse. Finger on the pulse one. is correct. Uh, last up on our off Grand River segment is N- the NCAA is pausing all investigation into booster funding. No more rules as it relates to recruiting. Yeah, no rules. Well, this is probably related to that case. Right? Give the money. It away. is indeed, and is begging yeah. for an antitrust exemption. Please. Uh, the we talked about this last week, and I think it's it's bears repeating. the The challenge that the NCAA is going to face is this idea of an an antitrust exemption implies that that there's some anti-competitive rules that they would like to agree upon. I don't actually think that they have anti-competitive rules they'd like to agree upon. What they want to do is just not pay student athletes. Yeah, it's just get out of it. So, it, it, and what I mean by that, it, the, so there's an anti-competitive rule in every single professional sports league that you see, and that is the draft. That we are agreeing that the free market is not going to dictate yep. where people's talents go. And, and in, in order to do that, they've, they've engaged in collective bargaining. They've done some offsets, right? Like there's, there is checks and balances that give them the antitrust exemption. Uh, but the NCAA has not come up with anything like that because they can't. And, and that's, not, that's not me putting down their sort of intellectual capacity, which is worth putting down. But, but truly, like... What are you going to do? Draft out of high school? Are you going to rely on the 24-7 ratings? Like, right. what, what are you going to do here? And and maybe there's a plan. Maybe the NCAA mm-hmm. buys one of these recruiting services and, and does something there. But the, the, the challenge for all of that is also that for the moment, your education is also tied mm-hmm. to your ability to play sports. So, you know, why would you want to go as a high school student to the university of Michigan to graduate, to be a douchebag when you could go to Michigan state and get an excellent education and not be a douchebag as we chose to do. But, but so this is a bit of a challenge and, and I think the NCAA needs to articulate itself Mm -hmm. a little bit better here, but this latest sort of sad, pathetic begging on the, on the, on behalf of Charlie Baker. Yeah. Just a, the basis of like Congress, please, but you need to say what you want, what you want, and yeah. he can't articulate their vision because he doesn't. There is not one. There is and and, and, and and credit to Charlie Baker, he's the one who proposed the like, oh, schools can fund. Like he's at yeah. least trying to give some progressive answers here. Yeah. But you need a real vision for this that you just don't have. Yeah. And so I don't know. Like this is, I don't know whether we said this on the pod, but you made this point about the the NIL. That if the school started paying players, that doesn't stop your boosters. Right. There's nothing about this that's going to stop the boosters from doing it as well. Why is Matt and MSU not going to continue to cut right. a check? Just yeah. because MSU cuts a, a check. So anyway, uh, it's we're going to keep talking about this stuff because I think it's relevant. But uh, let's talk about Purdue. No, no, tell us about Purdue. Oh, let's, let me just go ahead and preview Purdue yeah, here. Have Purdue's you guys heard of Zach Eady? He's a big fella. He's a big fella. He throws his weight around. Here's my here's my previews. You ready for this? Yeah, go. Cool. We're playing Northwestern Indiana, and you want to win both these games. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets tight. It's tricky. All of a sudden, you need to win some games in the Big Ten tournament. And I got bad news. Uh-huh. We already lost to Northwestern. Yeah. And the other game is on the road at Assembly Hall. Yeah, never a good place thought. where we don't tend to win. Correct. So I'm a little bit nervous, and it's more interesting to me to talk about that uh-huh. than it is to talk about these two teams, because mm-hmm. they are kind of both just sort of middling. But like, let me ask this. Let me ask this. Boo-booey. What, <laughs> Boo-booey. what if we just show up and we just give it the old college try? Oh, you will know that, what? Will that be good enough? There's a guy I know. Yeah. You might have heard of him. Will he call he said so, okay. that the important thing yeah. is that they win on the road yeah. and they play real hard. 
They play hard. And it doesn't matter where the outcomes of the no, game you don't have to win. No, 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 no. What matters is that game, that one time they decided to try. They tried hard, and the guy showed up. And they played hard. He acknowledges that that means that they definitely didn't try a bunch of other games. Right. <laughs> so, and that is fine? Acceptable? Uh, that's senior leadership. <laughs> And that's what we've come to expect, and frankly, at this point, deserve. AJ Hogarth, gonna miss some long twos. All right, let's do these Twitter questions. Yeah, that's uh, right. All right. Um, in the future, we might have to do screen share on these and just go through the Twitter. That might be a more engaging way. Oh, people uh, want to see their own yeah, questions. But, so that would long. require you people to use punctuation. You can't read. And then we would actually or be right. Or right. <laughs> subjecting people directly to what Tyrone Couch writes. Oh my I God. Think that that Can might... you blur yes. on, the, on YouTube? I think that is a human truly, rights violation. <laughs> truly. So. All right. Confusing. First up, Mike Jones asks, Greg, since you are tall, yeah. are you able to run around anywhere and physically abuse people without repercussions? Or is it just Zach Eady who gets to do that? At he first. did that earlier today. At first, <laughs> at first this is true. I thought this was a Jawan Howard oh, <laughs> question. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that became a second question. That became a second question. Honestly, truly, I did. That's where I thought this was going. Running around, abusing people. <laughs> uh, next up from Mike Jones. Think, Greg, this also feels like it's for you. Think yeah. you take a road trip to Canada for our honeymoon the first week of July. Oh. Niagara Falls, Toronto, maybe the Sioux Locks. Got any cool suggestions for places to see in Ontario. My suggestions for yeah. cool places to see in Ontario yeah. would be do not go to the Sioux Locks or Niagara Falls. Ah. So uh, the Niagara Falls. Just go to Montreal, which is not in Ontario. Correct. Yes. <laughs> um, I seriously met go to Montreal. In, uh, but while we were wedding yes. planning, yes. I was introduced, <laughs> and this is a little mm -hmm. name drop that I'm going to run Okay, do it. To the uh, mayor of Niagara Falls at that time. And he was like, are you guys honeymooning here? We are, you know, the honeymoon capital of the world. And I had to look the mayor of Niagara Falls uh, in the eye and yeah. say, no, sir. Uh, we are not honeymooning uh, Niagara Falls. Because I've been to Niagara Falls, yeah, and I fine. know better than to do that yeah. again. No, Mike Jones, you want to go to Hamilton. And you know why, because you're a Canusa alumnus. Where did we go to Interpol at? Was that Hamilton? That was London. 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 Another place that you don't want to go. No, no. So I would recommend go to Toronto yeah. and then maybe just cottage stay, country. Just stay just there. Get your ass. No, get your ass to Quebec. Come on. You get yourself to Montreal. Enjoy it. Eat the poutine. You're going to have a better time. That would be I, uh, Mike Jones, either cottage country or Montreal. Those yep. are my recommendations. Yep. Next up, Beth Amaro. Is having only one player in the NFL Combine a further indictment of the Tucker area? What's a reasonable expectation going forward? Can we take any satisfaction that our one guy scored better than 10 of U of M's in the U of, in U of M's 18 in the Combine? Uh, so is it we, this more of an indictment on of Tucker? Yeah. That's, oh, it is? Oh, no, I no, I think so. this is on D'Antonio. Yeah. Oh, on D'Antonio. This is still oh, is on D'Antonio. Like, honestly, two years of Tucker. Listen, I mean, no one was saying three. that, that D'Antonio was performing well for the end. I mean, this was this has been the indictment. So, I mean, what? We should be expect we should be expecting I, these guys to have developed in some way. Yeah. We think Tucker was going to develop I guess that's them. fair. I guess that's fair. It's a, bit of, it's a bit of column A, a bit of column B, maybe. Yeah, I don't think that we should be surprised. It also that. hurts that our best player from we, the season before this went yes. to Florida State. And it's doing yeah. quite well in the Good combine. Guy. So yeah, but I do uh, look. Um, it's worth him. remembering mm -hmm. that yeah, uh, uh, Blake Corum is slow, and that was really good to see. It was he's slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I I don't know what his his test scores were. The the quotes uh, uh, coming uh, uh, out of the uh, combine, by the way, uh, there was one quote that came out about not believing in planets. Yeah. That was a Texas A&M player? No. I think it was doesn't believe in space. Yes. Not you're... sure about space. Wasn't sure about it. Didn't know about space. <laughs> yep. Space, time, anything else. That's good. Next up, uh, another guy that doesn't believe in space, JD underscore Jer Bear. Uh, does Greg also have a hard time in his annual reviews with management, not knowing how to properly rate him? Mm. What with the long arms and the whey protein powder meals and all? Yes. <laughs> Talk, talk more about your annual performance reviews. Here's how my annual performance reviews go. I walk in. Yeah. I sit down. Yeah. And they think you're normal sized because and, of the camera. And they yeah. scream in horror. <laughs> 
and they're just so alarmed at me and my visage and yeah, yeah, yeah pale chest. I do more. Yeah, yeah. It's good. that uh, they're just like, just leave the room. Yeah, whatever it takes. Whatever score you need. Whatever we need. <laughs> and that's how it's done. And that's how I survive in the corporate world. Yeah. Jensen. That's working. Jensen Next up from Jerry Bear. Uh, more excited to see done with Big Ten basketball. Zach Eady or AJ Hogard? Can we throw Boo Booey in here for yeah. funsies? It because is. There's only one answer. Truly, the worst part of COVID is all of these players sticking around for so long. And the thing is, I don't. I think we're all being naive to suggest that AJ Hogard, we are done with him. Oh. Which is to say, oh, no. I'm not. Uh, nope. Oh. Hear me out. Okay. You know whose team doesn't have a point guard? Truly. Illinois does not have a point guard. Please stop. Please, I, I'm just, just saying. Please, it, don't. I think A.J. Hogart is done at Michigan State, but I don't know that he's done with Big Ten basketball. Let me say this. Let me say this about that. I have said on this podcast countless times that if you don't graduate and finish your playing career at Michigan State University, not you are not a Spartan. If he goes to Illinois, nothing will make me happier than being able to say that he is a failing Illini. And that but he will have kissed the Spartan. Well, well, that's well if he no. comes back in orange, yes. he has to reverse kiss. Yes, reverse kiss. He has to, kiss he has to be like, yeah. sort of a face sucking situation. Got a tenant situation. Yes. We've got a tenant situation. <laughs> Fine one. Got it back around to tenant. Got a tenant reference. Next up from ZX Xanders. Did Big Ten refs get a memo we haven't heard about? The three second violations don't pre- apply to Purdue. I wasn't counting those. Does that mean I, I get to do watch. this for three yeah, seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just choke me harder. Choke me harder. Oh, feels- All right. Okay. My God. My God. Next up, yeah, ZX Sanders. Director, yeah. Is it a requirement that at all times Purdue has a player that could be cast as. Um, mm, I don't know. I don't know this. This character, I'm not prepared to say it. Yeah, I think that's right. Blazing Saddles is one of those uh, one. films that I've never actually watched. Oh no, yeah, you need to. Richard, uh, Richard, Pryor. I'm getting, I'm getting a look of incredulity yeah. here from yeah. Cliff and Jones well off done. camera. And Cliff should because uh, we're gonna give you a shitload of pickles. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh yeah. Okay. I think we're, I think we're clear. <laughs> I just had to make sure. Mongo from Blazing Saddles. Uh, it, Sure. It is a requirement. Well, this is a reference to the fact that Purdue has another 7-3 yeah. dude wings, coming right. in. Just coming on in. So, yes. Yeah. Matt Painter knows how to pick him. But listen, until Mark, Matt Painter can get to the Final Four, uh, this strategy ain't working out for him. Next up from Sarah G, who has been... I want to credit Sarah yeah. because she's been fantastic in her... Uh, she's joined the Kate Wall tribe of mm. uh, loving and defending Malik. Quadrupling down. Which I think we would all agree, because what we didn't talk about is that Malik actually played a really great game and should have gotten more touches. He well, I wanted him to take over the game when he yeah. chose not to take yeah, over the game. Because he refuses and, to do it. And that's, and that's the problem. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Sarah asks, my question is, why? Why? Um, why? Sarah, I think you know the answer. Yeah. No. His name is not a name, it's just two letters. Yeah. Um, the Germans uh, in uh, the word for why in German is warum, and you can say warum, and the response can just be da, like warum, da. It just means because. Why not? Fuck off. Da. The official language of hate. Yeah. Next up, uh, Ali asks, "LOL, why did Rima Vassar have to try and involve a group of people super people super important to me?" Uh. In her poorly thought out political machination. Well, I'll answer that question. It's because she listened to the search, Holly, and she fucking hates you, dude. Yeah. Really did not like that podcast. And I think one of the things that would have helped it was if they had had greater diversity in who was interviewed. <laughs> I think, you know. Or if maybe they followed through on their commitments. That's when they reach out. To That's certain individuals. What I mean. Or wanted representation from certain Were there only straight voices on that podcast? Yeah, I think so. Not attractive. It was actually called the Search for a Better Red Pill podcast. That was all right. underneath. It was all there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, Ali does rightly point out that there was some using of ethnic minority groups. Correct. Uh, by the professor. Yep. And, and Den, uh, Deno, that. Den, Denly Denlo. Mm. Also, honestly, Dennis, you should have changed your name. I mean, you if you if you just think it, just if you don't know what the guy looks like, just think about Dennis Denno. You got it, nailed you got it. it. You nailed it. Uh, next up 
from Unusual Botanical Yes. Uh, which factor is more important when it comes to making the tournament? A, winning out the regular season, or B, stumbling against Northwestern and IU, but getting at least uh, to getting to at least the semis of the tournament? Does one give us more of an edge? I think you need to win the two. You have to win yeah. out the regular season. Yeah, it, just win, just win, just win. But I'm glad that we hit our quota for uh, talking through burps on this podcast. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it wasn't me this check, time. Check your bingo card for the talky burp. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Kate Wall up next. Oh gosh, Kate, you is it? Is the strategy for 34? That's Xavier Booker mm-hmm. uh, working. working? He looks ready now, rolling into March, and he's getting more serious playing time. Twelve minutes. Yeah, uh, Kate, I, it it ha- it has it has worked. Sure, if, that's what's frustrating. Yes, and more to the point, I think let's not say do this. Let's not call this a strategy. That's uh, really giving Tom and his ilk uh, more credit than I think they've earned. I think there is a strategy. It's just um, the incorrect strategy in and out of date strategy. Yeah. It's a strategy that's not being updated for new information yeah, as it becomes yeah. available. Data was meaningful at so, one point about three months ago. Yes. So I think it is, it's it's a choice, mm-hmm. as the kids say. Yeah, it is they tell me. It's, um, it, she, she adds, uh, sorry, I, this is my fault. Uh-huh. He should have played more than he has in every game so far. Okay. I'm only saying that he has, uh, saying what's been done was one possible way to prioritize this growth. Uh, I, I don't one know. One of the end parentheses, please don't yell at me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and and I don't know that we would have said that he should have played more in every game. No, it's I just don't want to know. lately it's very clear he's yes. ready to play. Yes. Um, next up from Kate Wall, can you name two players on the team? Obviously, Tyson is one. Uh, you trust more to get a crucial bucket or just a bucket in general over Malik. What does it say about the dependability? Attaching a random tweet for no reason, and I didn't include your tweet. But uh, uh, I think, oh, it was one of the responses to Sarah G uh, about her, which is that Malik is shooting a super high percentage. And, uh-huh. and, and I think, well, and again, it's easy to shoot a super high percentage when you are not shooting very much at all. Yeah. And I think that's the critique that I would have for Malik as a senior on this team in a program who needs guys to step up when Tyson's having a flat night, when AJ is having a shit night, that's every night. When you can't get things rolling, Malik has to be the guy that, that is willing to take more of those opportunities. So sure, okay, good shooting percentage. If he isn't trying more, if he's not stepping into some of that uh, vulnerability, what the oh fuck it. So to make your point, in conference, Malik Hall is our most efficient offensive player. Yeah, and is shooting fifty four percent from three, and it's a product. Of only taking wide open threes. Yeah. Only good so threes. it's almost as if there's an inherent flaw in this question Correct. and that no, no, Malik no, Hall no, will not, not about... take the shot at no, no, the end of the game. She's not talking about that. I, I think it's uh, crucial buckets. Like there were in that last five, four minute stretch against Purdue, there yeah. were they were all crucial buckets. Right. Yeah. And so that's on Tom and that's on AJ for not setting up plays that involve Malik on the low block. Yeah. The 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 fact of the matter is, uh, Kate, to your question, I don't disagree. The The problem is, is that either the team isn't setting Malik up for success or he's not seizing the, the opportunity in, in those moments because I will take Malik post touches all day all long. Day long. Yeah. And and so I don't know who that's on, but the, the fact of the matter is that Malik Hall with eight shots against Purdue is not enough shots. Like yeah. it, this, is, this reminds me of uh, two years ago, Tyson Walker. We're like, please, bro, yeah, shoot, more. shoot more, do more. There's also a problem that Tyson Walker is not the player that he was at the beginning. Of Correct. The yeah, he is really involved. Yeah. Uh, next up, Kitsky. Uh, AJ took more than ten shots. We lost. He's the worst point guard we've had. I'd rather have Tom Tom. You we heard... basically podcasted this, Kitsky. Sometimes we should just have you on to do <laughs> just I... our. You don't need here's yeah. here's the thing about Tum Tum. If we had a five, yeah, I would co-sign on that statement. Hard. There it is. But we don't we have a scoring don't. threat from the five. Yeah. So I can't quite authentically agree with this statement. Yeah. Right. If you had if you had Nick Ward on this team, mm-hmm. fine, <laughs> great, yeah. fine. Uh, Paul Davis, yes, please. Oh. Uh, Xavier Xavier Tillman. 
Uh, maybe a little less Xavier Tillman, only because he needs a point guard to get rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up from the Kiski, tickets to games are way too expensive. Changed my mind. Uh, no. Uh, I've got great news for you, Kiski. To get in the building against Northwestern, 13 US dollars. So I so you'll be fine. Yeah, just pick up the couch cushion. You can yep. go to the Northwestern game. That is senior night. Some Dogecoin. Uh next up from Kiski, uh y'all don't talk about NIL enough. I think most of our listeners would suggest we talk about it too much. Too much. I think he thinks that we have more individual <laughs> NIL information than oh, we do. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. We would disappoint you on that. Very much. Yeah. Uh, next up, Spartan eighteen seven seven zero. Who is worse? Rank them: Mel Tucker, Brady Hope, John L. Smith, Juwan Howard. Oh my, oh god. my god! This is actually this is difficult. We would we would have set this aside for a segment fish in years past, but yeah, we're gonna take it. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think if if we I, were Michigan, it, it, we're gonna say from the Michigan State perspective alone. Sure, and we have to. Uh, so if any of these coaches coach for Michigan State, is the answer. Okay. I think Juwan Howard has, has to, to be, be the worst. worst. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I, mean, I think number two is John, John L. L. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. I don't know. Then Brady Hoke, then Mel Tucker. Oh, no, I don't. I was. Gonna, I, I was. Gonna, I might invert Brady Hoke and Mel Tucker. I would. Uh, Mel, Mel no, Tucker is not the best of these. Yeah, options. no, I think Brady Hoke is. I think you would take Brady Hoke. I think you would absolutely take Brady Hoke over Mel Tucker. Hold on. Think about it. Yeah. You you got to think about it. Brady Hoke. I mean, he recruited didn't do much, level. but he recruited at a high level. Mel Tucker proved nothing, and Mel Tucker failed. I did, mean, this was a moral. Did failure. Brady Hoke? Well, yes. Okay, I'm setting aside the moral. Failure. Okay, I don't think you can, and that's why okay. also John Howard for me is the worst. The okay, so time. if if that's true, then you have to put Mel Tucker towards the bottom as well. If you're because Mel Tucker's only success came because of Kenneth Walker. Like Mel Tucker gets no credit. For the success of this. But Brady Hoke lost to Toledo, I believe. A Toledo team that fired its coach that same year. I don't know. In some ways, I don't know. I mean, Mel Tucker, I don't know. That might have been Rich Rod. I don't remember which one did that. Yeah. But that's rough, man. Spartan 18770. Oof. That's good question. I'm Ooh. just saying. Next up. Yeah. Wow. Uh, how do we get uh, the university to allow tailgating at the spring game? It's a good question. And just one, do it. Yeah. Just do it. If enough people come, they won't be able to repel all of it. I have uh, been caught drinking on campus during the spring game, and yep. the nice police officer said, just pour it out. And I was like, okay, deal. See, uh, you're way too comfortable with the roadie. I am not that comfortable. <laughs> But we should we should mention at some point we won't now about the time that you just failed to go down a few blocks to take care of some things and because the money maybe or the time I don't even know what this is in reference I'm to sure. well there's a building uh, I think it's on Albert uh, you know the, uh, a house of sorts a house some a, kind of house a government house <laughs> where they were offering a deal to. Get rid of things from your past life. Okay. <laughs> and you opted <laughs> not to do this. Because it cost money, I think, or time. Could have it's been not both. clear what, it's anyway. Roadie related. Uh, uh, next up from Spartan 1870, um, where would MSU be today if Izzo had stayed at Tulsa as an assistant? Oh, my. And that's a real segment of fish. That's we've got to set that one aside. We've got to set that one aside. Yeah. Next Nixie. On Friday, as a decent chunk of our fan base fretted over the inevitable loss for Dubu, both our gymnasts and hockey teams won the Big Ten. Saturday went so much better for those who paid attention Friday. Why don't more fans at least try to enjoy other sports? Uh, Nate, I think this is part a broadcasting problem. Yeah, BTM Plus. Part, part an understanding problem. The yeah. fact of the matter is, Nate, I appreciate that you like hockey. Yeah. As someone who played hockey, oh. uh, it is not a lot of fun to watch. Like, I don't think hockey is a great TV sport. Oh, I, I and, and you know what? Big Ten Network agrees. Wow. That's why they don't broadcast it. Hockey is much better enjoyed in person. Mm-hmm. That might, yeah, I'm on board with that. It's like baseball. It's the opposite. Right. There are some sports that it's yeah. the opposite is true. Football, I think, is more better enjoyed on TV because it takes four hours yeah. for the goddamn thing to happen. Oh my God, but so it's horrible. Uh, I, like I just, I don't know. And, and I think with gymnastics candidly, yeah. like 
I don't when someone lands at nine point eight two five and a mm. and a and a ten, I couldn't tell you the fucking the difference. difference. Yeah. Because what they just did was an incredible athletic accomplishment right. in either instance. That's right. And and it, like with, with figure skating, unless someone biffs on a on a loop, like do you know? It is fun when they biff, though. It is. I like a biff. Love a biff. I love to see him bite the bite the mat. Uh, Nate, your second question is really a rehearse of the first. We're going to go right to Beppe Plum. Wait, hold on. Uh, no, I already read it. Uh, I was sick this week, Beppe writes. So I got nothing other than they have found the likely spot of Sodom and Gomorrah, and there is evidence of a flash of heat similar to an atomic blast. So. Don't make God mad. Now you know. Mm, okay. This is you. That's for this me. This is your territory. I mean, listen, I'm not going to. You, do you know about this flash of heat? I don't. I'm going to look this up. You don't even know about this flash of heat? The atomic flash of heat in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's got to be a bathhouse. Next up, rant of the week. Government funding ha! and expectations. How can you cut funding nine years in a row and be upset that students are not growing? Remember Michigan schools in the 90s? They were two plus years ahead of Tennessee schools. Now they have fallen behind. Oh, sad. God. Soon you'll have an awful accent, y'all. Yeah. yeah. The real tricky part of this is even even communities that vote for mills mm-hmm. to put more funding in the schools still falling behind. Yeah. So as well, much as I, mean, I this is a and by the way this and we're not going to give time but this is a bipartisan failure. Mm-hmm. The Democrats do not have a better policy. The Republicans want to strip all money out of public education. Yeah. In, indefensible. The Democrats beholden this to unions, and particularly when there is there's a complete unwillingness to really, not just means test, but to really think critically around what public education strategy has to be. No political party has figured this out, and they, it is a full race to the bottom. And Michigan is yeah. real proof in the pudding that we have got inept people. I mean, that was... this. this a better way of saying what I think I was trying to say, which was like throwing money on it yep. does Isn't not seem fix to it. actually Correct. fix anything. Yep. It's a mix of accountability and funding, and neither side really wants to get right with both of those. Nice start from Mopoleaf. Uh, Lindsay, uh, we should apologize. Sorry, Raymond Chains. Mm. I didn't uh, get a notification. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we didn't you, check. We didn't check, but my you, bad. But it might be your fault still, too. We're not sure. Uh, okay. Next up, my belief, uh, LSJ. I refute most of quote. I refute most of the allegations in the Miller Chevalier report. <laughs> said Denno. <laughs> I will accept Chevalier. the censure, but contest any other form of punishment. What has been proposed is overly punitive in nature. End quote. So some is refutable. Air quotes. Uh, uh, and he decides punishment. What do you say? Uh, oh, he's an idiot, Susan. Yeah. Come on. I mean. Uh, uh, this is one of the true, on one side, mm-hmm. the way that we choose trustees, yeah. you get people yes. that are giving it their all, for one, yep. whether it's self-interest or because yep. they care about the university, yep. but it self-selects out people that understand how a board should function, Correct. and it self-selects out people with better things to do with their time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what you get is self-interested idiots that have no accountability that can only be removed and this by is, the governor. And this is a guy, by the way, who tried multiple times. Yes. And they kept saying, please, God, no, yes. not him. It, that is something please, that we haven't talked about. God, no, not him. And he's he's the only moron yeah. who didn't make any of his data available to the investigators. No, right? Rima, too. Neither gave their phones to the investigators. Oh, well, Rima did in the first investigation. Uh, but not this one. The, but yeah, in in the first one, Deno is not, and, and so the I think it was Jones Day. I think it was Jones Day. Okay. Did the report, and they're like, "Well, as far as we can tell, the leak didn't come from the board." Exactly. Notably, though, we didn't get to examine one jabroni's phone. Yeah. So. Uh, yep. Yep. No, if he had any, uh, if he had any self respect, he would he would resign, and the governor's going to have to do the hard thing. You wouldn't even need last night's meeting. In yes. most cases. Correct. Most cases, they even just the allegations, yeah. and you would get some kind of idea of I, what's the, the, the findings are going to that be. that there's a recording. They're yes. on tape saying this, and there's still, I mean, the lack of self-respect is stunning. It is. Uh, we said it at the top. Like, the idea that these two are enduring these. Oh, my God. This humiliation. Yes. Like, why? Yeah. You... Last up, Mamopoli. Yeah. 
The good difference, the quote good, end quote, difference maker. Booker? Cooper? Kohler? Going into this week's game? Mama, I believe that's way too many question marks. Going into this week's game. How can you not escape one week without asking a terrible question? <laughs> she says, I'm going with Booker. That's your guy. That's you're, your guy Mama, Mama. you're the Come Mama on. I'm too, I'm too annoyed on. at this point in time. The host, you it's, like Davis, him. it's Davis Smith. It's Davis it's Smith. Davis like Smith. You were here first. Uh, it, look, I think all of these centers have a role on, on the team. Yeah. Uh, other than Monty Sissoko. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to see Kiss the Spartan, bro. Uh, but the the fact of the matter is that Booker offers something incredibly different. Yep. And and it's the plus minus bears it out. Like yep. flawed stat in one instance, start aggregating that. Yep. Uh, it tells a story. Ball screens are the other thing that matters, though. Oh, we found him. Ball screens. All right, gentlemen, go green. Go, go white. white.